Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm wondering how you're doing. Uh, it's a strange time. Everybody's, I'm thinking of people, many people in a, some version of quarantine, uh, self-quarantine or, or holding up in your house anyway with kids from school and uh, everything that's going on, kind of uh, a little more isolated from one another. And uh, so I thought, um, I was thinking in my devotions this morning about where that shows up in God's Word. And there's several places that I hadn't, it hadn't quite cumulatively hit me uh, how that how that works. Um, Job. Uh, there's a there's a place in Israel, one of my favorite places to visit. Uh, just on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee that's called Job's Cave. And the local tradition from from the time of Christ already was that that was a place where Job came and sat and waited. And all the, the conversations with God that took place there, whether it was there or some other location, Job, Job was also isolated by his illness. Uh, people who didn't want to come around him, they thought the illness perhaps a result of sin. And yet they they were afraid to be with him. Uh, and then then Elijah, uh, he had a couple of times of isolation like that. The the famine for three years, and he was at the the brook of Zarephath out in the wilderness, and God fed him. You remember with the ravens, and then he moves into a Gentile town, uh, and and he's staying with the the widow and su being sustained there with her they were sort of in isolation then uh, he calls elisha uh, well uh, one more elijah after the whole prophets of baal thing and and this great victory and then jezebel turns on him and she's going to see him dead and he runs away and he goes to a cave uh uh in at mount horeb uh, the place of the Ten Commandments, and he and he hides there, and he hears the still small voice of God. Um, then, God says, "I'm going to let you pass on your ministry to Elisha," and uh, and he does that, and, and yet God still continues to uh, he he's not let off the hook right away. There's some period of years, I think, that Elisha follows Elijah. Then, when Elijah is taken up to heaven. Elisha experiences this quarantine time uh, with the widow and the jars of oil. Um, if I'm getting that right, I'm leafing through second, first and second kings here. Um, uh, and uh, yes, in second kings four and the jars of oil. God, God's people have often been isolated like that. God's people have often... Uh, had a period of time away from others, away from where what they thought was their purpose and calling, and God provided for them, and he also prepared them for further ministry. <laughs> I just heard from my son this morning. He said, you know, they had done all this preparation for the earthquakes and pr produced all of these uh, emergency bags and uh, kits, you know, that they distributed to people in need, and they had left over, I don't know why, they had left over all these huge supplies of uh, surgical masks <laughs> and hand sanitizer. <laughs> and, he, and he said he thought, what are we going to do with all this? <laughs> and now he says they have a closet full of, of hand sanitizer that they are able to help people with, uh, comfort people with, uh, provide for people who are anxious. God's people may be in a funny place and, and feeling a little alone, but we're not. Not only can we connect like this, but, but we connect as we all go to God's Word. And, and He provides us with what we need. Sometimes, unexpectedly through something we obtained before, sometimes 
because God has provided that to someone else. And we in the body of Christ, we, we bring to one another all the things that God uh, requires for us. Finally, there's one more person who has a period of time of isolation and uh, you might say of sabbatical. That's Jesus. Jesus went out into the wilderness and it was a time of temptation and difficulty. And yet, it's God's word where he finds his refuge. I hope, and we'll talk about this more as we do devotions over the next couple weeks. Uh, my prayer is God will uh, make it possible for us to do this every day. But uh, a, a time of sabbatical is not just a time with crazy kids in the house or, or a time of loneliness and by ourselves. It's a time for quiet and reflection on God's Word. I pray that you will have time for prayer today and for long, slow thinking about what God is doing in your life. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we look out and the world is bright, the sun is risen, and the, the sky is clear. Lord, uh, nevertheless, the, the world is filled with viral sickness. We're familiar with that imagery, Father. And the, for, for long years, people have seen the, the wonders, the, the, uh, the exciting things about the world, and have not been aware of the viral sickness that pulsed through them and, and through others. Sin that drove them away from you, made them unclean. Lord, we pray that this physical sickness may be a, an opportunity, a time when many may reflect and see, when they may have finally time to step away from all the, the worldly hullabaloo and, and have the time to see those things that truly matter to reassess their relationship with you, to draw close, drawn by your Holy Spirit, to turn to your word for comfort and to find there more comfort than even they expected. Lord, we pray that you would not only wash the world clean of illness, but Lord, wash our world, our people, by the water of life, and the gift of your Holy Spirit, grant that by your that your word may infect the hearts of all around us and us, your church. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. If you need anything, uh, we should have up on our website by all now. I haven't checked actually. The phone numbers for uh, elders and pastors and church staff. Um, uh, we want to help to meet needs that come up and we pray that you're all well. Uh, we'll be here for you. I love you all. God be with you. Bye-bye.